كتاب الله دستور وخير الخلق أسوتنا. Never touch a man's beard unless your name is Hamza Sotsis. Rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Subhanallah. How are you doing, Brother Hamza Sotsis? How is everything? How's the wife? <laughs> good. That good, huh? <laughs> oh, things must be going on uh, top form. MashaAllah. Tabarakallah. It's hot in here, yeah? Get the brother some juice. Not Jews. Juice. I don't want to get done for anti Semitism, yeah? Today we have with us a very well known, intelligent, and handsome personality. Well, that's enough about me. Let's talk a bit about Hamza, yeah? <laughs> These guys. <laughs> now, in our society, we have people who do not believe in a God. They are known as atheists. Never heard of them? No problem. Five main contentions. Don't know what that means? Pick up a dictionary. It's good to read every now and then, you see? So five main issues that these people have, or some Muslims who may be confused.com about certain things, not a plug-in, but uh, we're going to try to deal with a few of these issues. High five! All right, that's the way we roll. In my humble opinion, Brother Hamza here is the leading figures in the field of atheism. You see more than one of me leading figures? Interesting. That is correct. Please do not interrupt me. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, I've been following this handsome brother for a very long time. Excuse me? No, 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 no. Not in that weird way or a creepy way where I know that you recently changed your phone line to BT or you've bought a coffee table from Ikea with a scratch on the side or you wear blue pyjamas before going to bed. <laughs> I, I, I don't do pyjamas. Oh. Please tell me you wear something else. <laughs> Question number one. If God made everything, who made God? There are two easy ways of addressing this question. Number one, the definition of God is that being that never came into being. In other words, he wasn't made, he never began. If he never began, if he was never made, therefore he was always there. So you can't ask the question, who made God? Because he was always there. And when something is always there, then you can't ask the question, how did it come into being? Because it was always there. Confused? Confused.com Good. The second answer is, well think about it. This universe began. It is well known that the universe began. So therefore it must have a cause or a creator. Now the question is, did something create that creator? Well, if you continue that way, then why don't you ask the question, then who created the creator that created the creator that created the creator that created the universe? Then. You're right there, yeah? Yeah, just... Uh... Then you could still ask the question, who created the creator that 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 created the universe? If you do this forever, there will never be a universe. So there must be something that's uncreated. Let me give you some examples. Say, for example, I want to kiss your lovely hand and hairy hand, right? But before I kiss your hand, I have to ask permission from your mother. Auntie G, can I kiss your son's hand? She goes... Oh, I don't know. I have to ask permission from her mother. Oh. She has to ask permission from her mother. If that goes on forever, I will never kiss your hand. Make sense? Yeah. So that means there can't be an infinite regress of causes. Otherwise, you'll never have the effect. You can't have an infinite regress, a forever chain of creators. Otherwise, you'll never have the creation. So it makes sense rationally, using our brain, that there must be a uncreated creator. Make sense? It does indeed. Do you want to kiss my hand? <laughs> no. Question number two. If there is a God, why is there so much evil? The problem of evil is not a problem. Just because it's evil and lots of suffering in the world, it doesn't mean God doesn't exist. Why? 
Because God is also Al-Hakim. In the Islamic tradition, in the Quran, Allah says He is Al-Hakim, the wise. So there is wisdom behind some of these things that we think are evil or things that we can't explain because there seems to be so much suffering. How can anyone allow this to happen? But Allah has the picture, we just have the pixel. We have fragmentary knowledge. Allah has the totality of knowledge. So if there's wisdom behind some things, it means there is a reason. Now you may think, but I can't see the wisdom behind a baby dying of cancer. But fair enough, that's an argument from ignorance. Also known in Latin as argumentum ad ignoratium. You're arguing from ignorance. Just because you can't see the wisdom, doesn't mean the wisdom's not there. Let me give an example. This counter argument from the atheist is a typical mentality of a toddler. A toddler runs to the table, he wants to drink the glass that's got this gold, amazing liquid. His father says, no! And the toddler says, evil dad! Yeah. But the toddler doesn't understand that in that glass, is whiskey oh. and it's bad for the toddler. So the toddler can't access the wisdom of the parent in this case. Also we have to understand that in Islam, Allah has given us reasons why he's allowed evil in the first place. For example, in chapter 67, Allah says that he created death and life in order to test us, to see who would respond to this evil with good deeds, essentially. And also we have to understand, we have to understand that not only is life a test, but it's there for us to pass this test. Because Allah says He doesn't burden a soul more than it can bear. So He's empowering us. And what's interesting, what's interesting is that when we go to paradise after passing this test, even if we suffered for 80 years, once we're dipped in paradise for a split moment, according to the words of the Prophet Muhammad upon whom be peace, yes, we will be asked, did you ever suffer? And we will reply, by God, we never suffered. Wow. Make sense? It does indeed. Alright, relax. Question number three. I believe in science. Why do I need to believe in a God? Well, in actual fact, they don't contradict each other. You can believe in science and you can believe in God. It's very simple. Because science explains the how things happen, how things work. God, religion, explains the why. Let me give an example. Imagine my auntie from Greece. Yes, I'm Greek, but I look Pakistani. My auntie from Greece, she basically made a beautiful cake for us. From a scientific perspective, you can say how the cake was made. What's the chemical structure of the components and the ingredients? What temperature was used? How long it took to bake the cake? Etc, etc. However, if I ask the scientists why she baked the cake, they'll be scratching their head. The why could be, maybe it's a celebration for you passing your long beard test or something funny like that. Or your I like that test. <laughs> Very much. Or your exams. Or maybe she's celebrating something special, like a oh, special let's occasion. Keep with the beard. Okay, the beard. But the point is. We don't know, we can't access the why using science. Mm. Science has a scope, a frame, a method, and that can only explain the how, not the why. Science explains the how, religion, God, explains the why. Let me give you an example. Please do. The water cycle. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that He sends down the rain. And we know this is His mercy. Because if we didn't have rain, we wouldn't have plantation. If we never had plantation, we wouldn't have any food. If we, never have any, if we never had any food, we wouldn't survive. So Allah is saying, this is the why, because rain is a form of His mercy. But science says the how. It's based on the water cycle, right? You have clouds, you have the sun, you have the sea, etc, etc. And by the way, the Quran mentions in an interesting way, aspects of the water cycle too. But the point here is that Allah, God, religion explains the why, science explains the how. And we don't deny the how because Allah in the Quran tells us to look into the cosmos, the universe, into the physical reality on how things work. Question number four. Does evolution disprove Islam? Does evolution contradict Islam? Of course not. Because we believe Islam has come from the divine. It's an unchanging truth. 
Yes, there is a scope of interpretation, and it's a little bit flexible, but we believe it's come from Allah, who knows everything. It's perennial knowledge, it's timeless knowledge. Science is transient, meaning it's time-bound, and it's bound to change. I used the word bound twice there, ah, but it doesn't matter. Nicely done. And science bases itself on a thinking process called induction. Induction is a thinking process. Mention that twice as well. well calm down. <laughs> whereby you have a limited set of observations and you conclude for the next observation or for the entire set of observations. What does this really mean? It really means that essentially you may have another future observation that contradicts your previous conclusion. Mm. Things are changing all the time. Yeah. And that includes evolution. We knew many things in the history of science that they thought it was absolutely true. Like the steady state theory. The universe was static. It had no movement, no beginning. But that changed and people started to believe that the universe had a beginning, it was expanding, for example. Take for example, a kind of scientific consensus on the disease of Pellagra. Pellagra was a disease, it was a skin disease, not Pellavra, <laughs> <laughs> Pellagra. If you don't know what that means, that get a dictionary. Make, that doesn't make it any better. Anyway, Pellagra was a skin disease and the scientific community, the consensus was, this is because of infection. But there was one scientist, he said, no, this is because of nutrition. They all rejected him, thought he was stupid, but they found out that it was true. It was a nutritional disease or lack of of nutrition. What about the person who called it Palavra? Palagra. Palagra. Pal 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 Palava. No, not Palavra. That means rubbish. Oh, this is Palavra. No, Palagra. Yeah, this Palagra is Palavra. Now, so we have many of these U-turns in science and that's the beauty of science. That's why we all love science. That's why Islam loves science. That's why David Sienenberg, a historian of science, he attributes the scientific method as we know it today to Ibn al-Haytham who wrote the book on optics in, I believe, in the 10th or 11th century. And Ibn al-Haytham in his biography, what does he say? I study the cosmos, the physical world, because it brings me closer to God and I've been encouraged by the Qur'an. Wow. So we're not afraid of science. All we're saying is, have epistemic humility. Big word. What does that mean? Be humble in your knowledge, because science doesn't give you absolutes. It's going to change. So even if evolution is true in a scientific sense, or this scientific fact is true, it's only true now. We don't have an infinite number of observations to make a solid conclusion that there is no doubt in this. It's bound to change. When if it doesn't, it doesn't matter because it comes from a limited method. Whereas the Quran is timeless, science is time bound. And that's the beauty of science, it changes. Touch me bro. All right. Number five. How can I believe in something that I can't see? Well, I don't think anyone intelligent gives that as an objection to God's existence anymore. Even atheists. Because think about this. Do you believe in your great, 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 great grandmother? Of course you do. If she never existed, you wouldn't be here. But have you seen her? You don't have access to her grave, you don't have access to her DNA, and you don't have any photos. So, do you believe she existed? Yeah. The reason we believe she existed because we make an inference. We reason based upon background data, that's not a direct observation. So of course, we believe in things that we cannot directly observe. And if we thought we should believe in things that we only directly observe, then we wouldn't believe in electrons. Or protons, neutrons, quarks, oh, bosons, bosons, liptons. You're a clever boy. MashaAllah. Tabarakallah. Allahumma barik lahu. Ameen. Wa iyaka. Inshallah, you understood what was being said. And inshallah, you've learnt some knowledge. If you have any questions, don't put them in the comments below. It's going to be a mission getting the questions to Brother Hamza. Best thing I suggest is, just watch his video on YouTube. Notice I said video, didn't mean to say that. I meant to say videos. going to let that slide. Watch his debates, mashallah, with uh, Lawrence Krauss, Richard Dawkins, mashallah. <coughs> mashallah. Say the
That's the way we roll. <laughs> so maybe we should say, before you finish, that if they want further videos to break these concepts down further because these answers were concise and short, then maybe we could do it in the future to empower the brothers and the sisters and the friends. Right? Insha'Allah. Insha'Allah. God willing. God willing. Can you say that in an American accent? Let me try. Say it again. God willing. God willing. That was God a... willing. God the me. This is where we end. <laughs> God. <laughs> <laughs> Today we have with us a handsome, intelligent, very knowledgeable brother, mashallah. But that's enough about me. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what he does? He just reads it off the floor. That's a classic. <laughs> that's what, Is that what he does usually, bro. Yeah. Don't know, man. Don't this. Recently changed your phone line to BT, you bought a coffee table from IKEA with a scratch on it, or you have blah, 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 blah. Okay. <gasps> Damn, that was going so well. We obviously had uh, linguistic <laughs> lessons from uh, the Tasmanian devil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going to have to edit that bit out, yeah? <laughs> I think that's a diss. A ilmi style diss. <laughs> with a <the> ring. <laughs> <laughs> the whole 90% of the video is just going to be him I just love your beard, mashallah It's very poofy Who? Poofy Poofy? Yeah. What does that mean? It means it's very kind of puffy You kissed your own hand, but <laughs> I'm going to let that slide <laughs>